The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion number 1664 in the name of Ruth Maguire on celebrating International Credit Union Day 2016. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, so would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Ruth Maguire to open the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Ms Maguire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In opening this debate, I'd like to begin by thanking all the members who signed my motion that allows this debate to take place and all those who've stayed to take part. The role of credit unions in reducing poverty and the impact of financial worries is well recognised and has been described in reports by organisations from, from the Joseph Rowntree Foundation to the Social Market Foundation. I'm proud to mark International Credit Union Day 2016, which took place on the 20th of October, with this member's debate in our Scottish Parliament. International Credit Union Day has been celebrated worldwide on the third Thursday of October since 1948 and exists both to mark the achievements of the credit union movement to date, as well as to raise awareness and support for their work today and in the future. Owned and controlled by members and with membership based on a common bond, credit unions are underpinned by the cooperative ethos of people helping people and are committed to maximising the quality of service provided to members and not the extent of profit provided to shareholders. I recently met with representatives of Step Change Debt Charity who do excellent work in my own constituency of Cunningham South and indeed across Scotland. They told me that they often refer clients to credit unions and are strong supporters of their ethos and work and is a more sustainable and sensible way for people to get credit when they need it. As well as providing affordable loans with fairer conditions and longer repayment terms than payday lenders, credit unions also empower communities and encourage individual entrepreneurship. Indeed, they're often termed community banks, a description which well reflects their nature and purpose. Credit unions provide effective and affordable services for over 217 million members across the world and as a real force for positive economic and social change, it's encouraging to note that they have a thriving presence here in Scotland. There are 103 credit unions in Scotland with a combined membership of over 383,000, which works out at roughly 7% of the Scottish population, by far the highest percentage of the nations across the UK. Even more encouragingly, this current figure reflects a strong increase in membership in Scotland over recent years and a marked increase in junior members. I'm also pleased to note that several Scottish credit unions have recently participated in the UK government funded credit union expansion project to further develop their reach and impact. And that six will now proceed to the next phase of this project, which will further develop and diversify their operating model making them more competitive and efficient, including through a market-leading banking app and improved digital access channels. In my own Cunningham South constituency, the co-winning-based First Alliance Credit Union has been supporting a diverse range of savers and borrowers in the Ayrshire community since 2004. There are currently over 3,000 members with £2.3 million in savings and £1.9 million out in loans. I'm delighted to note that First Alliance has recently been awarded a five-star fair banking rating for its personal loans. I'm also pleased to share with the Chamber First Alliance is working constructively to deal with some of the challenges presented by welfare reform. Its partnership working with North and South Ayrshire Councils and six social landlords in which the credit union has trusted partner status for example, means that the services of the credit union can be utilised to help tenants in arrears or facing eviction. At the same time, it benefits social landlords as they are assured of the rent they're due. The credit union also provides budgeting accounts for people who have problems managing their money, something that's proven extremely helpful in light of welfare reform, which has seen payments move from fortnightly to monthly for some folk, um, for example. I know that members across Scotland will be able to draw on excellent examples in the areas they represent 
and I look forward to hearing more examples of good practice in the course of this evening's debate. Presiding officer, um, I applaud the support that parties across the chamber have given to credit unions in previous terms, and I welcome particularly the recently launched Junior Savers Fund, which works with 10 credit unions to develop relationships with local schools. This progress is great, but there's still much more to be done to make Scotland even more of a credit union nation. It's encouraging to note, too, that the recent manifestos of every single party in this chamber included a commitment to supporting and expanding the role of credit unions in Scottish society. Equally, it's good to note the substantial cross-party support that was gathered by the charter published by the Scottish section of the Association of British Credit Unions last year. Amongst other things, the Charter calls for encouraging employers to partner with credit unions, improving financial health by encouraging regular saving and responsible borrowing. Developing a stronger credit union presence in schools and supporting and promoting the capacity of credit unions as providers of affordable credit in our society. I look forward to working with members across this chamber to achieve these aims during the parliamentary term ahead. Um, I see I've finished just a little ahead of my time, so to, to end up, I'll just give a quick plug to the cross-party group on credit unions, which has already received good support from across the chamber. If anyone else wishes to join, they'd be most welcome. Thank you. I now call uh, Dean Lockhart to be followed by Neil Finlay. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and thanks to Ruth Maguire for bringing forward this motion and giving us the opportunity to celebrate International Credit Union Day 2016. This allows the Chamber to discuss and to recognise the importance of the credit union movement for Scotland and for the people of Scotland, and to highlight the future benefits that credit unions can deliver in Scotland. Credit unions in Scotland play a unique role in offering savings, loans and a range of services to their members that might not otherwise be available or available on affordable terms. With a membership of approximately 387,000 uh, in Scotland, credit unions play a, a leading role in their communities. And as Ruth Maguire said, they're often thought of as community banks. And Scotland benefits from a proportionately higher level of credit union membership than the rest of the UK, and indeed has the fourth highest level in Europe. I'm pleased to say that credit unions in Scotland have benefited from measures taken both in this chamber as well as taken by the UK government. For example, as mentioned by Ruth Maguire in 2013, the UK government announced an ambitious credit union expansion project worth up to £38 million towards the further development of credit unions across the UK, and many in Scotland have benefited from this. The credit union expansion project was designed to identify mechanisms to reduce the cost of lending, to assist credit unions to jointly develop new products, and to implement a new operating system based on the, new, uh, based on the same system used by a number of UK banks, thereby enabling real-time processing of payments and other transactions. All very welcome developments to widen the reach of the credit unions in Scotland. In my own region, Stirling Credit Union has been credited as being one of the most innovative and forward-thinking credit unions in Scotland. It was originally started in the late 1990s as a simple means for Stirling Council employees to save and borrow at affordable levels. Since it was established, it has expanded, and it is now a community credit union, which includes individuals who work in Stirling, Clackmannanshire, and areas of Lanarkshire. The expansion of the Stirling Credit Union has been a very welcome uh, expansion in the local community, and the credit union has recently been successful in encouraging local businesses to take up payroll-based savings schemes. Payroll-based savings schemes are important because it's often the case that those individuals who save in this way are better savers. The money that they save helps to improve their credit ratings and can help in other areas, for example, when those individuals are looking uh, to save for a mortgage. The Sterling Credit Union has also established a, a junior savers scheme, something mentioned by Ruth Maguire, which has now expanded to include primary and secondary schools. I think this is a very welcome step to introduce school ch children to finance and saving at an early level so that in future uh, life beyond school, they are familiar with the concept of saving and finance. Deputy Presiding Officer, I offer my congratulations to the many people across Scotland who have made the credit unions a success. 
and it's my pleasure to support the motion in the name of Ruth Maguire and I look forward to supporting the continued leadership of the Scottish Credit Unions. Thank you. Neil Finlay, followed by Ash Denham. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer, and can I thank uh, Ruth Maguire for bringing forward the, I think it's the annual debate on credit unions, and it's very welcome. Can I declare an interest as a member of the Blackburn and Seafield Credit Union, and uh, my mum is a volunteer. Um, we all uh, understand credit unions has been a great facility, providing uh, local and very much needed low-cost uh, banking and financial services in our communities. Um, despite the best efforts of the previous Chancellor to put some of the smaller credit unions uh, out of business with his reform, the reforms previously referred to, they have overcome a very difficult period for some of them. Uh, in my region, the West Lothian Credit Union has just announced its £10 million, £10 million worth of loans have been uh, given out to the local community. A fantastic achievement in both Myself and the Cabinet Secretary for Communities were delighted to attend uh, their celebratory event. Uh, they and other credit unions are always innovating, trying to bring in new products, getting into schools, uh, opening. Recently, they have a cash tray account to help people stop smoking, uh, prepaid debit cards, free wills, and of course, loans uh, at a much uh, cheaper rate of finance than the likes of Provident, Wonga, Quick Cash, and Homebright, and that is critical. Over 1.2 million members uh, across the UK, and as has been said, three, over 350,000 in Scotland. That is good, that is good numbers, but there's so much more we can do in terms of the untapped membership out there. Just 7% of our population are, are members of these ethical uh, financial cooperatives. And that should be much, much higher. We need to create an atmosphere and a culture where credit union membership is the norm. So things like baby accounts, children's accounts, young savers uh, uh, accounts, uh, holiday loans, white goods loans, Christmas clubs, school clubs, mor uh, mortgages and business loans uh, for some of them. These should and could be provided and taken up by so many more people, but that requires all of us to promote the credit union ideal and, where possible, follow our warm words with action and, crucially, budget. Uh, investing in credit union development is truly preventative spend from which we will all benefit. So I pay tribute to uh, all credit unions across the world uh, and to the people who, day in, day out, in, in our communities, provide the, the essential lines of credit to our constituents, to our families and friends and indeed to ourselves. I call Ash Denham to be followed by Liam Kerr. I would just join in adding my thanks to Ruth Maguire for bringing this debate to the Chamber so we can recognise uh, the great contribution that is given by credit unions. Uh, this year's International Credit Union Day theme was the authentic difference, and that was in celebration of the positive economic impact that the sector provides both in financial services and also in social change. The continual growth of Scotland's credit union sector has led to an increase in membership. Credit unions obviously owned by their members, they're controlled by their members, and because they are owned by their users compared to other institutions that are owned by stakeholders and investors, credit unions put their emphasis on providing the best possible service to their members instead of just increasing profits. The most recent figures published by the Bank of Scotland revealed that Scottish credit unions have over 562 million in assets, 296 million in loans out to members, and 484 held, and that's in millions as well, in savings. Credit unions are also protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, which gives um, assurances, exactly the same protection as would be um, afforded to money held in a normal bank. Scotland's credit unions should rightly be recognised for the work that they do and their success both here in Scotland and in a wider global context. Among the 100 credit unions in Scotland, there is a membership, as has already been said, of over 387,000, and that 7% of the population, which um, should be noted is higher than in the rest of the UK, so it shows that the uptake in Scotland um, has been quite positive. The Association of British Credit Unions 
accepted the Outstanding Membership Growth Award from the World Council of Credit Unions recently in 2015. And in February this year, the Scottish Government published a report on the work of Scottish credit unions. This report highlights the success of Lanarkshire Credit Union's Savvy Savers project, a very interesting project in which they were able to help over 7,000 primary and secondary school pupils save over £650,000. Savvy Savers works in 74 different primary schools and five secondary schools in South Lanarkshire. And they're also able to employ full-time school project workers to promote the education of financial responsibility and um, forward planning and money management in an effort to tackle poverty. This is just one example of the way in which credit unions can work with schools to increase future generations' financial awareness. The Association of British Credit Unions last year produced a Scottish Charter and in that it suggested that changes that we as parliamentarians could make to help Scotland become a credit union nation. They uh, made suggestions such as we could encourage all members to partner with credit unions to make savings and repaying loans via payroll deduction a standard workplace benefit for all people across Scotland and also that we promote credit unions as providers of affordable credit for people from all walks of life. And I think these are some very good suggestions that we could take forward. In this chamber, it's also obviously important that we can recognise our local credit unions. In my constituency of Edinburgh East, I have the Castle Credit Union, and I know that they have been working hard to help the community flourish. As our local credit unions grow, more money is brought into communities and that is obviously a benefit to all of us across Scotland. Call on Liam Kerr to be followed by Ivan McKee. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. It's with great pleasure that today I participate in this debate. And let me at the outset also thank Ruth Maguire for bringing forward this motion and giving Parliament the opportunity to express our appreciation and raise awareness of the critical work the credit union movement is doing both in Scotland and internationally. And what a movement. Having begun in around 1852, or perhaps even 1844 on one analysis, with a simple idea that people could pool their money and make loans to each other along the principles of cooperative inter interdependence, a community first mentality, and a volunteer management structure, I note that now there are perhaps 57,480 credit unions in 105 countries around the world. Collectively, they served 217.4 million members and oversaw 1.79 trillion US dollars in assets. Now with that international footprint, International Credit Union Day, which took place on the 20th of October, is vital, not merely to reflect upon credit union history and achievements, but also to promote the credit union ethos and raise awareness. It is a day to honour those who have dedicated their lives to the movement, to recognise the hard work of those working in the credit union industry and show the appreciation of the members. I note, interestingly, that the actual first credit union day was 1927, on the birthday of America's apostle of thrift, Benjamin Franklin, who early credit union founders believed symbolised the life and teaching embodied in the spirit and purpose of credit unions. And that day only folded because people were too busy to celebrate. Now, the motion asks for commemoration of the impact and achievements of credit unions. And I note that since the Credit Unions Act was passed in 1979 to give a common regulation framework for the movement, the credit union philosophy of mutual self-help has gone from strength to strength. At the macro level, over 1.2 million members in the UK have now recognized the value of credit unions and have savings approaching 1.1 billion pounds with them. In Scotland, as we heard, there are about 100 credit unions with a combined membership of over 383,000, about 7% of the population, as you said. Now, I can't really speak about Cunningham South, as the motion requests, but I can speak about the North East and drilling down into the North East region, Angus, Tay Valley, Dundee, Grampian, North East and St. Macker credit unions provide a vital service, offering easy access savings accounts and ultimately, given the interest rate cap at 3% per month on a reducing balance, 
a responsible alternative to the high interest payday loan companies which can place individuals and families under a burden of debt for many years. The largest credit union in the North East, Grampian Credit Union, is one of the leaders in Scotland with innovative saving schemes and loan programmes and it leads the way in the field of payroll saving schemes with over 30 companies and organisations including NHS Grampian, Aberdeen City Council, the VSA, the University of Aberdeen and the Aberdeen Foyer all signed up to their staff saving schemes, schemes which have been proven to be an easier way to save and that evidence has shown makes better savers. It is clear to me and judging by the contributions from around this chamber, everyone here, that credit unions really do make the authentic difference. And whilst those of us in this chamber often have authentic and deeply felt differences, I have no doubt that in supporting this motion, like the credit unions themselves, we share a common bond. Thank you. Ivan McKee, followed by Claudia Beamish. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, I too welcome the opportunity to take part in this debate on international credit unions and thank Ruth McGuire for bringing this issue to the Parliament today. This debate gives us the opportunity to celebrate the credit union's impact and achievements both in Scotland and worldwide. It also gives us the opportunity to raise awareness of the work of credit unions and to encourage more people across Scotland to become members and to utilise their services. Scotland has a long history in financial services and Scotland also has a proud record of community spirit and cooperative ventures and the credit union movement brings both of these together, benefiting many people across our society and also providing benefits to our economy. Scotland's credit union movement is growing now with over 100 credit unions across the country with a total membership of 388,000 members and managing savings worth more than £400 million. In my own constituency, several credit unions operate in Easterhouse, High Hill and Deniston, Cran Hill and Carntain and Ridry. All are providing local services to support people who often may not be in a position to benefit from standard banking or financial services. I myself am a member of the Glasgow Credit Union, one of the largest in the country. Scotland needs a variety of financial service offerings, ensuring that all people in society can access both savings and lending services suitable to their needs. Credit unions offer that, complementing traditional services. Credit unions also have the great advantage of typically operating with a local focus and with ownership structures based on cooperative principles, giving them resilience and a firm grounding in the communities they serve. New models of saving and lending are an important part of ensuring the financial health of all in society. This is recognised by the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, who recommend credit unions and the role they can play in reducing poverty. But credit unions are more than a service to borrowers and savers. A thriving and growing credit union sector in Scotland can play a major role in bringing more people actively into the economy, building strength and resilience in areas which are often, too often excluded from economic activity. They provide a role in supporting entrepreneurship and the development of micro-businesses across Scotland, something which our economy as a whole needs to drive our aspirations for inclusive growth. As the motion also clearly reminds us, credit unions are an international phenomenon. One of the most famous is Grameen Bank, founded in Bangladesh by Muhammad Yusuf, Yunus, himself later awarded a Nobel Peace Prize for his work in establishing microcredit facilities amongst poor women in Bangladesh, showing that the financial services model used by credit unions can deliver results in supporting financial independence for the most marginalised groups. I worked at the t in Bangladesh at the time when Grameen Bank first achieved international recognition and witnessed firsthand the tremendous impact it had on individuals and communities. Scottish governments of all persuasions have over the years provided support to help develop the credit union sector and all parties support taking steps to encourage future growth of the sector. The credit union movement in Scotland looks for support in a number of practical ways, encouraging employers to engage with the movement, to offer payroll reduction services for employees for savings and loan repayments to credit unions, encouraging schools, colleges and universities to teach about credit unions and financial management. The significant rise in young people becoming members of credit unions is to be welcome. Early education in financial management and in cooperative principles is a benefit to our society and economy. 
and promoting credit unions and supporting the development of their capacity to play a more substantial role in offering financial services. Presiding officer, by raising awareness of credit unions through debates like this, we can all play our part to help make Scotland a credit union nation. Thank you. Claudia Beamish, followed by John Finney. Thank you, presiding officer. As other members have done, I would like to thank Ruth Maguire for bringing this member's debate to the Parliament today to mark International Credit Union Day. And I look forward to working with her in her role as convener of the Credit Union Cross-Party Group. I'm particularly pleased to speak in the debate as a new deputy uh, convener of the reformed Credit Union Cross-Party Group, and also as a member of the Scottish Cooperative Party, MSP Group, in the Parliament. As you will all know, credit unions are co-ops, and that means, of course, as we all know, they are owned by their membership. But this is a very inclusive model, which is very significant and important. Obviously, the main re-emphasis will always be on providing the best service for members and not for profit. Firstly, in my remarks, I would like to wish Lanarkshire Credit Union a happy 25th birthday. I'm looking forward to attending their birthday party on Friday night to help them celebrate all the hard work they have done over the last 25 years. And after a long week this week in the Parliament, I'm definitely going to look forward to some cake at the party. We all know the importance of credit unions in Scotland today. With difficult financial times, they not only help people save for the future, but they help people when they are most in financial need. Yeah. Joanne Lamont. Thank you very much for taking the intervention. I wonder if the members are aware of the We Glasgow Loan Initiative, which is Glasgow City Council, along with Pollock Credit Union, BCD Credit Union, offering people low-cost loans to ensure that they're not preyed upon by uh, pay loan lenders. And would you agree this is a kind of initiative we'd hope to be supported across the country? Claudia Beamish. I thank the member for that important intervention. And the issue around payday loans has also been highlighted by some other members tonight. And some of the um, heavy advertising seems to have diminished a, a bit on the television about these things. But it is really shocking um, what, what, um, uh, how, how they prey on um, vulnerable people. Uh, credit unions are, though, truly for everyone. Whether you're joining a credit union through your work or going to your local credit union to get a loan, you will be joining the other 387,000 people who are already a member in some way, shape or form. And it's true to say that many people are only a few pays away from being in financial trouble across Scotland. And being a member of a credit union can help you prepare for the unexpected. At the start of the year, I was delighted to visit the newly established outreach, outreach branch of the Lanarkshire Credit Union, which is opened in Carluc. Lanarkshire Credit Union uh, worked closely with the local community council to provide a service to the local people who didn't necessarily know about credit unions in the past. This has enabled them to use the facilities without the geographical challenges of setting up a permanent office. And with the help of volunteers, which is often the case in credit unions, and this should be recognized tonight. I do think we need to be mindful of people in rural areas where geographical difficulties can indeed occur. I was, however, pleased to meet with Alison Dowling from the Capital Credit Union this summer. And the common bond area covers Midlothian and, and the Scottish borders in my region and in the ministers. She, she was telling me that even though there was a difficulty of setting up an actual outreach, like in Carluke in the borders, people in that area could still be members and such things as online banking and payroll deduction have meant it's easier to join a credit union. Lastly, I would like to speak very briefly about the support for young people, which has been mentioned also by Ash Denham and others tonight. And I was pleased to read, um, to be competitive about it, that Scotland um, has seen a higher growth in junior savers compared to other parts of the UK. And uh, Ash Denham has already mentioned about the the Lanarkshire Credit Union, as well as teaching about debt and how to manage finances. This is done in a fun way. I hope there will be other parts of Scotland where this is already happening too, and the sharing of models can be invaluable. And the cross-party group can certainly help with this. I think tonight has brought forward a whole lot of suggestions for future agendas, which is very exciting and valuable. The theme of this year's Credit Union Day was as we've heard, the authentic difference, celebrating the positive impact that credit unions have on financial services and social change. I truly believe they have a lot to celebrate. Thank you. 
John Finney to be followed by Claire Adamson. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I, I thank Edward McGuire for bringing this important motion to us tonight. Um, it talks about the motion talks about commemorating the impact and that's significant of credit unions and the achievements, and I would say that's many. Like others, I declare an interest. I, I'm a member of the Scottish Police Credit Union. Um, and, indeed, um, in the rollout from what was formerly the Strathclyde Police Credit Union, I was the first member of the North of Scotland, as we trialled the, the, the system of payroll deduction. And I think that's an important part of, of encouraging membership if we can have employers uh, play a role in uh, deductions from salary. Um, I think the significant strength of the, the, the credit union system is the common bond, whether that's one of uh, geography, uh, where often uh, credit unions play a significant role, or one of the bond within the workforce, and uh, again, commend the work of trade unions and staff associations working with employers in connection with that. Um, the ethos that's been mentioned, people helping people, well, that's that's to me is highly commendable. In not for profit cooperatives seems to me to be a very attractive uh, basis for going about business uh, with the benefits retained and indeed shared. Um, and this has been uh, highlighted by Ash uh, Denham and in, indeed Claudia Beamish there, the phrase uh, authentic difference. Well, what a contrast, what a significant contrast with the banking industry, um, none, none of whom are likely to win the fair banking award that was referred to. And that once honourable profession largely discredited by greed and actually the complete reverse of the ethos, ethos that underpins the credit union. So, um, it is about effective and affordable financial services and, and the, the motion indeed details the global reach. I was particularly, and in a day when we've all had a lot to say about the United States, I thought it was very compelling to read that US employers can offer credit union membership as a condition of employment, which I thought was an interesting departure from what some might expect. Um, but the reach that I'm particularly interested in is the reach into some of our more vulnerable um, communities and the accessibility and the role of volunteers. Colleague Neil Finlay talked about the, the, the volunteer role. Uh, I, I certainly know in, in, uh, um, in my own area there's a number of credit unions and the, the, the fact that they would pitch up at the local community centre at a known time I think is an important um, factor. So I welcome an increase in membership and particularly as a number of other people have said um, the junior membership I think if that leads to a lifelong um, connection with the credit union movement then that can only be good. Um, and why is that important? Well I think it's important because of the attitude to money. The, the savings are respected and it's non uh, as responsible non-exploitative lending. Um, I'm, I'm particularly delighted this is a, a non-party political issue and uh, um, commend the the uh, comments from uh, Conservative colleagues. I think the fact that it is um, a part of every party's manifesto is significant and shows that people do recognise that, as has been said, a force for positive and economic change. Um, and I think another factor that we can't lose sight of is the fact that this empowers and, uh, people and communities. So, the, 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 again, the motion talks about a growing role. Uh, I think they're capable of more. I think historically, the credit union movement has come up against resistance from the big banks. Um, um, we've heard of the excellent work that's been done to counter payday loans um, and store cards, and importantly, the encouragement to not only borrow, but save as you are borrowing. borrowing. So, I think they're a, a, a valuable part of C Civic Scotland, a very ethical part of Civic Scotland, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have spoken tonight. Thank you. The last of the open speeches is Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I declare an interest as a member of Capital Credit Union and also uh, congratulate Ruth Maguire on securing the debate this evening and also on the re-establishment of the CPG on credit unions, a, a very well-respected CPG from the previous term of the Parliament. I'm really glad that the Scottish Government is giving about £200,000 of funding to support credit unions in establishing schemes in schools and helping children understand the importance of saving and managing money. This is so vital in our communities, especially since it's often the most vulnerable people, the people that find it most difficult to balance their, their checkbook, that um, can get the greatest advantages from a credit, credit union in their community. Lots has um, been said this afternoon about the benefits of credit unions and I want to thank the Association of British Credit Unions Limited for, for their briefing for today's debate. And, um, but I also want to talk about the Scottish League of Credit Unions, a sort of smaller league of credit unions, one that works closely with one of my local credit unions, Wisher Credit Union. 
And the strength of the, the League is it supports community-focused credit unions in whatever stage of development they are at. And it will recognise and respect the different needs and aspirations of individual credit unions. And it will not seek to impose a particular model on its members. And I think that's come out so much in the debate this afternoon, that credit unions are of their community. And some will do outreach, some will do different types of work in their community. And I was really interested to hear about the anti-smoking um, uh, projects from uh, Neil Finlay earlier on. And Neil Finlay also mentioned the volunteers. And I think this is hugely important. And why engaging with our young people is so important because the volunteers in our credit unions are aging, unfortunately. And we need young people to come on board and fulfill that role as well. The Scottish League of Credit Unions concentrates on key themes of education through group training sessions with the, and materials that are provided to their members. It gives advice in the legislative compliance and financial issues. It offers a network for other um, uh, credit unions to come together and share good practice. Facilitation where members of credit unions wish to coordinate with one another to achieve common goals. And it represents the group at um, local Scottish, UK government and other credit union organisations and promotes credit unions in our constituencies. And I think this is really important. Um, credit unions are so different. They approach people differently. If I could just mention um, one in your own area that I covered um, previously uh, in East Kilbride, when you go onto their website, they welcome everyone. They give a commitment of their vision, of their mission statement and their commitment to the members who come to them. And this is so important because credit unions are now financially secure. They now have the financial services compensation scheme associated with them and they're covered by the Prudential Regulation Authority and the Financial Conduct Authority. And we know that this is really important because payday lenders are, 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 has been mentioned already and, and how they kind of prey on people in this situation. But I'm, I also remember the, the collapse of the Fair Pack saving scheme where um, basically a banking technicality for those who paid a direct debit were able to recover some of their money but many many people lost money in a saving scheme that they thought was was safe for them so it's really important that that financial security of the credit unions is out there but this also puts a burden on the volunteers they have to know financial regulation and they have to take part in modular training schemes from the institute of chartered bankers and this costs money, and that money is used from the members to train people and volunteers that are there. And I know that this is a concern going forward because we want these organisations to continue to be sustainable and provide such a wonderful service that they do in our communities. I now call on the Minister to close the debate. Up to seven minutes, please. Thank uh, Minister, Mr. Wheelhouse. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And uh, I want to thank, uh, as other members have done, Ruth Maguire for lodging her motion. And we've had some excellent contributions from across the chamber. And like John Finney, I'm delighted to see a, a genuinely kind of cross-party uh, motion and indeed a cross-party debate today. Because credit unions do play a vital role in our economy, uh, providing a range of ethical financial products, as we've heard, and services to a wide range of customers, many of whom do face financial exclusion. And so I too offer my congratulations, as others have done, for all those who have developed the movement in Scotland and indeed uh, to wish Lanarkshire uh, Credit Union a happy 21st birthday if uh, Claudia Beamish is attending the birthday party. Credit unions are, are part of a dynamic, growing and increasingly global movement for change. And a number of members have made that point. Liam Kerr, uh, Dean uh, Lockhart and others uh, have made that point. The World Council of Credit Unions uh, estimate, as we have heard, there are now approximately 60,000 member-owned not-for-profit financial cooperatives worldwide. And it is important, the cooperative model that uh, Claudia Beamish has highlighted for the benefit of the members and on a not-for-profit basis, which is uh, a key part of their, uh, their approach and ethos. Of course, as Ruth McGuire and other colleagues uh, across the chamber have recognised, Scotland has a good pedigree when it comes to this more inclusive uh, way of doing finance. And in fact, for more than 45 years, credit unions have proudly served our communities, providing members from all walks of life with more than basic uh, financial services. And as Ruth McGuire and, and Ivan McKee referred to, Joseph Rowntree Foundation appointed to the role of credit unions in reducing poverty. And in my new role, uh, I have been very pleasantly surprised to learn, as others have highlighted today, that a significantly higher proportion of people in Scotland are enrolled in credit unions uh, in Scotland than in England and Wales. 
uh, and as uh, the Bank of England data that, uh, that has been referred to, uh, a number of members have cited the 7% in Scotland. I think the comparable figures are 2.6% for Wales and 1.5% for England. So I think the, the sector really deserves a lot of credit for, for its reach in Scotland and identifying a need and, and, exp and exploring that and also indicates there's great potential for growth in England and Wales as well. So it's, uh, it's important to highlight on, on the uh, occasion of a, uh, a world event to celebrate the role of credit unions that um, there's great potential as I think Neil Finlay put uh, that there's great uh, room for expansion further. But today around 100 credit unions are operating across Scotland as we've heard with a combined membership of 387,000 assets of 560 million and aggregate lending of 296 million to the members, or at least those are the figures I have uh, to hand. And therefore, it's, it's right the Scottish Government is committed to working with credit unions to support and promote this important work. And that is why uh, the Scottish Government established the Credit Union Working Group in October of 2014 under the chairmanship of uh, my colleague, uh, Fergus Ewing, who was the Type Minister for uh, Business, Energy and Tourism. And that group included credit unions, their representative bodies, advice services and the accountant in bankruptcy. And it considered a wide range of topics and identified two key priorities for strengthening Scotland's credit union movement. The first priority identified was to help credit unions play, to play a fuller role in the delivery of financial education. We've heard some great examples of that today. And the second priority was supporting the expansion of payroll deduction schemes as a standard workplace benefit, a point referred to by Ruth Maguire, Dean Locker and, and many others today in this debate. Um, turning to financial education, it is vital and I agree with members who have raised this point that children grow up with an understanding of money and saving. And junior saver schemes run by credit unions in partnership with schools are a really excellent way to teach children aspects of numeracy and social studies in a real world context, as well as helping them develop a culture of saving and uh, responsible borrowing ultimately. And uh, indeed, as uh, Claudia Beamish has highlighted, it is really great to see uh, such positive growth in Scotland in, in junior savers. We believe that these schemes embed a savings ethos amongst pupils at a young age by holding regular collections of children's savings in the school and often with the incentive of saving towards a school trip or another savings goal as well. And by running these schemes, credit unions play a vital role in helping to educate children in money matters, often incurring a financial loss themselves. So I think we should recognise the contribution that credit unions do uh, to provide that, um, not always um, uh, without uh, cost to themselves. And delivering on the Credit Union Working Group's recommendation to explore the development of junior saver schemes, uh, the Scottish Government announced a new £300,000 funding scheme in March of this year, aimed at supporting credit unions to develop sustainable junior saver schemes in schools across Scotland. And credit unions uh, were invited to bid for funding over the summer, and in September, the Cabinet Secretary for Communities, Social Security and Equalities announced that 10 credit unions uh, are set to receive Scottish Government funding to launch new junior saver schemes across the country. Now, each credit union is aiming to set up at least three new junior saver schemes in their local community, and the Scottish Government will work closely with them uh, to share learning uh, from these schemes with the sector. Funding is also being made available to support the production of a junior savers toolkit, uh, which is being co-produced in partnership with the credit uh, union sector and Education Scotland. And this toolkit will bring together best practice, providing a useful resource for all credit unions in Scotland, well beyond the life of this funding. So hopefully it will have a legacy value. And with Education Scotland as a key partner, we will ensure the toolkit is consistent with the curriculum, helping pupils to develop a broadly based financial capability, focusing on understanding, uh, competence, responsibility and enterprise. And this in turn... I certainly will. Willie Coffey. Thanks very much, Minister. As, as co-convener of the cross-party group and co-ops, I'm delighted that you recognise the close connection between credit unions and the co-op movement. Would you similarly acknowledge that the, the world's first recorded co-op was established in Fenwick in my constituency in 1761, some 83 years before Rochdale, which is a continuing source of pride for my constituents in Fenwick. <laughs> yes, indeed, a round of applause for, for Fenwick. I'm, I'm delighted <laughs> to, uh, to, to acknowledge that, um, that there's such a long history in East Ayrshire and uh, I welcome uh, Willie Coffey's uh, remarks in support of Fenwick. Um, each, each credit union is aiming, to, as I say, to set up at least um, three schemes and in terms of the scope they will uh, also in turn make the offer of junior saver schemes even more attractive to schools. Um, turning to payroll uh, deduction and, and I think Ash Denham and a number of others have referred to this in the context of the authentic difference and I think it's a really important role. Uh, the second key priority identified by the Credit Union Working Group 
uh, is around supporting the expansion of payroll deduction schemes. And we know that credit unions see payroll deduction schemes as a key to ensuring a more sustainable future. Such schemes offer a convenient way for employees to save into a credit union account directly from their salary. In turn, they do help credit unions to build a wide and varied customer base of borrowers and long-term savers as well. Uh, and in order to further the same and demonstrate support for credit unions, the First Minister has written a letter encouraging employers to partner with a credit union to enjoy the benefits of payroll savings for both staff and the organisation which is available for credit unions to use. And the Scottish Government's business pledge also includes a recommendation to employers under their workforce engagement commitments uh, to offer payroll deduction savings as a standard workplace benefit as well. Uh, yet another reason, uh, presiding officer, to encourage the business pledge. Uh, but following a, a recommendation by the Credit Union Working Group report in coming months, the Scottish Government will develop a, a package of resources for credit unions to use when engaging with employers to make setting up payroll deduction schemes a smoother process for all parties. Uh, payroll deduction schemes are, as I say, an excellent way of, of bringing a wider benefits to the workforce and uh, the Scottish Government believes employees can take advantage of payroll deduction and last month uh, on International Credit Union Day we invited our credit union partner to, into the Scottish Government offices to raise awareness of this important employee benefit for all our staff. Um, I also want to just highlight very briefly and before closing, uh, presiding officer, just the point that relates to a number of uh, references that John Finney and others have made to access and accessibility. This is, debate is happening at a time when, of course, we're seeing a contraction in bank branches and clearly credit unions, which are locally based, community based or workforce based, um, will have an ability to extend the reach of financial services to those who are being affected by branch closures. The Scottish Government is committed to improving financial well-being and reducing income equality to create a wealthier and fairer Scotland for all its citizens. I'm delighted we've had such a positive discussion today around the role of credit unions in that capacity. We recognise, I think, across this chamber the huge contribution credit unions make by providing responsible and ethical financial services which strengthen the financial capability of communities and change individual lives for the better, as a number of members have said. And we will continue to support this important work and indeed to raise the profile of the credit union movement in Scotland. Thank you very much. I close this meeting.